Welcome to the car, guys, and welcome to the first Koenigsegg <laughs> ever on this channel. Can you believe it? Can you believe I'm literally, it? I cannot tell you. This is like every birthday, Christmases, birth of your children, you know, getting married. This is, this is, this is the day. This is the greatest day of our lives. There's no understanding. The sun is out. We are standing next to one of four of the greatest supercars, hypercars, that have ever, ever been built. That's right, folks. This is a Koenigsegg CCX. Now, there's only 49 of these made, and there are only four limited ones. So limited is a track pack special edition. So you get track suspension, red leather, get a big old wing on there, and you get exposed carbon body. And there's only four of them made, and only one of them is right-hand drive, and we've got it for you today. Can't believe it! <laughs> So this week, we're going to take this car that has been pre-warmed for us, this and we're going to take it out for a full drive road test, full bore acceleration. What? Hang on. Oh, oh, what? Yeah. Hang on. Are we allowed to, uh, are we allowed to do beanage? We are fully allowed to do beanage in this car. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Famously, the CCX has got a special sensor in it that you can put pretty much any type of fuel in it, and it'll automatically sort it out, including biofuel. So normal fuel, around about 800, 850 brake horsepower, but biofuel, which this has got in it right now, is a thousand, a thousand brake horsepower. So hang on a minute. So this is kind of our ecologically friendly episode, right? It's running on biofuel. Yeah, this is Greta Thunberg friendly. How dare you? So welcome to the Koenigsegg CCX edition a very special carbon exposed bodied car red interior a thousand brake horsepower and utterly unique only one of one in the world in right hand drive we've come here to the octane collection and its owner has graciously said that we little old us can take it out I mean, clearly certifiable at this point. Jason, what do you think? This is shock and awe. Oh, it is. It's absolutely shock and awe. The detail in this car is just, it's unbelievable. The way that all of the carbon meets perfectly, the center windscreen wiper, I mean, that's just crazy in itself. This car just shouts, look at me, doesn't it? Yeah. This is hypercar distilled. Exactly, it is the essence of hypercar. You've got a removable, roof here which fits down in the front of the car so we'll show you where that goes right now it, it's pretty stripped out it's very exotic and funky inside and you've obviously got that massive carbon wing there is no bad angle on this car look at the way it swoops down to the back you've got those two sets of three little circular lights You've got this incredible engine bursting out of the engine bay. It's open to the elements here. You can see it, but it, it's just the way the whole thing swoops all the way to the back. And then it's just perfectly resolved in one single enormous <laughs> exhaust pipe. And it is enormous as well. Absolutely. It, it would make uh, Aventadors feel quite inadequate, the size of that center exhaust pipe. And of course, this car being an addition which means it has the track pack, has this enormous carbon, of course, spoiler on the back as well. It just shouts to you, doesn't it? One of the things I absolutely love is the detailing, right? These wheels, as enormous as they are, are hewn out of a single block of aluminium. Take a moment to just think about that. Which makes them both very pretty, but also very expensive. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be curbing into these bad boys. Now, the CCX was made from 2006 until 2010, and then obviously it was followed by the Agera and the Regera, and then soon to come the Yesco and the Jamira. But this is a moment in time for Koenigsegg, where it was still being produced in the old hangar, hence the ghost symbol. So the ghost squadron affiliated with these cars means that cars that were made in the old hangar before they moved to the new production facilities. This is therefore an utterly unique 
moment. They made 49 of these CCXs and they had really mastered the technology, the finish, the dynamics, the speed, everything was perfected. And then these were the ones that were the majority of Koenigseggs sold before it moved on to the new generation. Talking of detail, on the seals as you get into the car, it specifically says 1,018 brake horsepower, 1,280 kilos, which incidentally is the same as the GR Yaris. It is. <laughs> 400 the same, plus the same kilometers. as a GR Yaris. And obviously a very important stat as well at the bottom of that plate, 400 plus kilometers an hour. Yeah. See, we've got to mention these incredible dihedral doors. Dihe bihedo, bihedo, yeah. D -dido dicahodrianal doors. Which and they're so just, light. Yeah, look they're at just, it. The, the move, the action of that is just wonderful. You can't see any of the mechanics of how it actually does it. You, your brain goes, well, I don't understand how that works. And actually, when you're driving and the doors are closed, you can see into the mechanism. See into the mechanism. Now, interestingly, when you get out of the car, as you'll see on the passenger side, the window drops down halfway. When the doors are up and you're lifting the front clam, as you open the clam, the windows then fully go down so that when you lift the clam, it doesn't touch the windows or foul on the doors. That, my friend, is detailed. That's clever. Koenigsegg started off as being a bit of a Swedish curiosity, a Swedish meatball, I believe you <laughs> yes. referred to it as. But the thing you've got to remember is that Christian von Koenigsegg is very passionate. He's got Obsessed. the engineer's mind and every aspect of this car has been thought about and improved and I guess perfected. This really is the culmination of all of that experience, isn't it? And the point being is that you never see these things. These are rare, precious jewels. They're incredibly capable mechanically. You can drive them every day if you want to, but because of their cost and their now value, you don't often see them on the road, which is why we're especially proud to bring you a Koenigsegg yeah. to the channel today, because not only is it a thousand brake horsepower hypercar, but it is also a piece of automotive sculpture. Under the hood of this car, we've got a V8, which is supercharged. We are talking proper, full, analog ironmongery, full on analog experience, manual gearbox. Everything in this car is controlled with your feet and your hands. There's very little electronic trickery going on. There is traction control, which you can change to various levels, turn it right off if you want to but the whole car is kept going by the driver. And that to me is really exciting. Although turning the traction control off would not be exciting, it would be death. Yeah, and we're not doing that today. <laughs> oh. And actually it's quite civilized to get in and out of. You've got an enormous sill here, which you've got to clamber over, but it's wide enough to act as a sort of funnel to ease you into the sport seats. Now, as you can see, we've got red leather and Alcantara inside here to denote that it's a edition car, as is this bit of stitching here. But if you thought that the exterior was an event, take a look at this. Perhaps the most extravagant and bonkers looking display, this side of a TVR. Pretty decent, chunky sized wheel. Ming the merciless controls, so we've got proper full-on Buck Rogers going on here. If I take it out of reverse, which Koenigsegg suggests when you stop the car, you leave the car in reverse as an anti-theft measure, it will then lock it in, which means people can't steal the car. Clever. But right here, we've got this central display, which has got all the various functions of the car. This button down here, though, is where everything is controlled. This is the Koenigsegg button, and you have to hold that down in order to then press other ones like the ignition, the engine start, and some of the other controls. Down here, we've got the traction control toggle, and above here, you've got some more crazy Buck Rogers controls. But of course, this is the bit that we're most interested in, a full six-speed manual gearbox, cool to the touch, Koenigsegg symbol in the middle, and controlled via the clutch pedal, by the driver. Sitting in the car, you have a low roof line and you're very much aware that you have a, a pillar box effect of curved glass. It's like sitting in a Le Mans car, an LMP1 car. You've got a bit of light coming in through this roof panel, which is very much appreciated. You've got a big old reassuring fire extinguisher. And overall, whilst it should feel claustrophobic, for some reason, it doesn't, even when you've closed the doors. You're surrounded by carbon fiber, leather, alcantara, and quite the most beautifully finished and milled 
instruments and buttons that you'll find anything short of a Pagani. But that's enough babbling, let's get out and drive this thing. So here we are, Jason, we are in a Koenigsegg CCX. We've got the keys and I don't think the owner has noticed. Um, I feel a little bit sick. Yeah, I know what you mean. I've got, a, uh, I've got what, what the locals like to call a fizzing in my winky. <laughs> There's an anxiety level here that um, I've not experienced for quite some time. <laughs> this is the, uh, the key for the CCX, as you can see. Solid silver. Solid silver. Solid silver. So you press this to arm it. And then to start one of these, you have to hold down the Koenigsegg button. Okay, yep. Turn on the ignition. Oh, two buttons. <gasps> and oh. then hold down this one. <laughs> and here we go, folks. Into first, handbrake down. <gasps> oh, yes. There we go. Well, that's not the, uh, it's not what I was expecting. What were you expecting? I was expecting much clutch slipping, much swearing, a couple of stalls and... Uh, no. You know, this is a hypercar. Well, yeah, it is remarkably civilised, isn't it? I mean, it's obviously loud, but yes. I mean, the great thing about Koenigseggs is they are very drivable, and that's why a lot of the owners put serious miles on these cars. If you want to know what it's like to drive a limited edition Koenigsegg, you're about to find out. It's quite loud, as you can tell. It's, really, it's not just quite loud, is it? Yeah. I mean, I could barely hear myself think, oh God, that feels dangerous. But you see, oh, ground, okay. ground clearance isn't actually too bad. The experience is dominated by the fact that we're looking through a small piece of curved glass and it feels like we've literally just taken a Le Mans car out onto some twisted Yeah, it really roads. does, a hundred percent. This yeah. feels like we're sitting in some kind of Like an LMP1, yeah. The visibility isn't that bad though. I, I've just jumped in this car, it's the first time I've ever driven it, and I am not feeling stressed, I'm feeling very, very comfortable. Whether you can hear us or not is another matter. Suspension is nice and compliant, despite being the track car. So this has got track suspension on it. Yeah, but hang on a minute. I mean, that not that a bit ironic? Why? It's a two million pound track car. No one's driving this on track. Of course they are. Who's driving this on track? We've got lots of light in the cabin because of this big window yeah. above us. It's, uh, it's fairly airy. The air conditioning works really well. And I will say though, the dials, although they are quite beautiful and very exotic and space age, yeah. you cannot read them at all. Not even vaguely, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you what speed we're doing, what revs we're doing, I couldn't tell you what the state of the engine is in, how much fuel we've got or anything. It's absolutely crazy, but I sort of like that. Yeah, see now that's a problem though for men of our age who need to wear reading glasses. That's a bit of an issue, isn't it? It is, it is. Because you're happily tripping along in your 1,000 horsepower hypercar uh, with no clue about <laughs> what's going on in the world. But it's very usable, it's very drivable. The steering has got a lot of weight to it. It's very direct. Look at that. Ooh! You think it would feel enormous, but actually it doesn't, which is a big shock. I think whether that's because of the driving position the way everything's angled downwards, but it doesn't feel intimidating at all. I mean, it does feel a little bit like uh, an on steroids Noble M600. I was just about to say exactly the same thing. Yeah. It has that Noble feel about it, doesn't it? Yeah. The cabins are very similar size. You have the big wheel arches at the front. You can see big lots of car behind you. Yeah. It's definitely got a Noble-esque feel. Yeah, I mean, I can see absolutely nothing behind me. There's a tiny window, which if you're lucky, you might be able to see, I don't know, some flashing blue lights, and that's about <laughs> it. But wing mirrors are good. I can see this fantastic view of that fixed rear wing and that enormous haunch. But look how space-age this is in the centre This console. is weird. I, I, it's what I, you want. Needing reading glasses, I have no idea what any of those buttons actually do. Well, no. All I can see, they just look like hieroglyphics to me. Exactly. It adds to the exoticism of this 1,000 brake horsepower car. So remember, 
With biofuel, it's a thousand. We have a thousand brake horsepower. It is a proper, full-on hypercar that we've got on this channel today. Listen to that V8. But because it's a supercharger, the power delivery is very linear. So I'm reliably told that uh, if it does step out, uh, it's quite easy to catch. <laughs> oh yeah, you're funny. Apparently. Never. Apparently. It's not stepping out. Not ever. No. Cowboy. Thankfully, oh. today the roads are dry. Very dry, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be allowed out in it. No. And I should say as well, full disclosure, I've been in Gera RSN right. uh, up the Goodwood Hill climb, so oh. I was a lucky, the owner of that car took me up in a passenger ride. So I have been in this sort of car before, but uh, it's quite different from actually driving it. Yeah, I've never, never been in this car before. Nothing like this. And now, Oh, is there some beanage available? I think we may have to uh, give it some beans. Oh, God. Make sure there's nothing else moving in the Northern Hemisphere. pressing it all the, all the way down for a couple of those, but maybe on one of them I was. So you did get a bit of full bore there, but I have to say, I don't own this two million pound <laughs> car, and so I'm not going to take any major limit liberties. That is, uh, that's a frightening, that's a frightening about of horsepower, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite a thing, isn't it? I mean, it's so raw and unbelievably visceral and just hurtful, really. It is hurtful. Yeah. It really is. That level of shove is... You can see why you can see why they decided on supercharging instead of turbo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm very thankful that they did choose Thought supercharging you. because at least you've got a chance of catching it and you can enjoy the revs as they build as well. It's very mechanical. It doesn't sound like it's a happy engine. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, does it? It sounds like a very angry, gargly, massive troll. It sounds like you've captured 50,000 wasps <laughs> and you're just prodding them. Yeah. And they can't get to you. That's what it's like. <laughs> they are so, that is such an angry car. You could probably see yourself easily doing a couple of thousand miles in this, couldn't you? Yeah, oh yeah, it's very easy to drive. I mean, I'm not sure I'd want to take on a long motorway journey, frankly. A bit noisy for that. A bit noisy. Earplugs. Yeah, a little bit but it's, it's very easy to drive, it's not intimidating at all. And surely this has got to be the closest you can get to having like a full-on race car out here on the road. <laughs> Especially with the track pack. I just think this is a great moment for Koenigsegg, because this is like the last of the old classic Koenigseggs before the new generation. And I mean, what a machine this is. Only 49 in the world, only four edition track pack versions and only one in right hand drive. One of one. And if you keep going at that speed it'll be one of two because you'll be in half. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll take it, wrap it up and get it delivered. <laughs> How does it feel to be in a two million pound piece of Swedish exotica? I was going to be very dirty then, but I won't. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, 
it's odd, isn't it? it, it because it's so expensive, it's, it's I can't I can't reconcile it in my head that it's that it's that much money. Two million pounds worth of absolute perfection. I mean, two million pounds. It sounds like a lot. Uh, it is a lot. But when you consider <laughs> that a Regera RS is four million, true, and a Pagani Zonda used to be a million, but now is like four or five million. Yeah. Is it is it really that crazy? Well, I suppose if you're you know a hundred millionaire, then no, of course it's not. No. It's barely a. It's basically a Ford Escort for me. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I have to say the the drama and the sheer brutality of the acceleration and how beautiful it is, really. I mean, this is a, a properly violent Viking of a car. Oh yeah, 100%. It's so good. I mean, the owner took me out in this car earlier and uh, let me just show you the footage of uh, what it was like when he accelerated in it. Cue, cue my face being <laughs> mashed. Slipping into fifth, and uh, all's right with the world, right? <laughs> and yet, slipping into fifth, and it's still very angry. It's still very angry and uh, very gnarly. I have to say, the suspension is very good in it as well. Yeah. It's not crashy, bouncy. I don't feel like I'm going to lose a feeling. It seems to be the feel. Whoa! Thank you for watching this episode on this magnificent Koenigsegg CCX. I think you'll agree, this is one of the most exciting things that we have ever, ever done. Don't forget to subscribe, ding the notification bell for when we have another film uploaded. Don't forget to find us on Instagram. We've got a Facebook page as well. Get onto the website and don't forget to buy that merch. And there'll be another episode of The Car Guys next week. <laughs>